On Capitol Hill, slamming President Biden's proposed tax plan that economists say will raise taxes for everyone and every business. Joining us now to discuss this and more is Executive Vice President of the National Taxpayers Union, Brandon Arnold. Always good to see you, sir. So if Biden is reelected, he has vowed to let Trump's tax cuts and jobs act to expire next year in 2025. Now, this is significant because there would be a huge burden on small businesses as well as the middle class. Talk about the effect this would have. Yeah, I mean, the detractors of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act like to say that it only cut taxes for the wealthy and for corporations, but that's simply not true. Average Americans got huge tax relief from this package. And now if you were to repeal it, as Biden says he wants to do, you'd be talking about massive tax increases. People that are barely getting by making fifty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 in a really tough economy could be facing tax cuts of fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 or even more. A family that's making $200,000 with three children could be looking at a tax increase of $7,500. You ask these folks now, ask anybody at the grocery store if they can afford a tax increase of that magnitude and they will laugh in your face. Yeah. Obviously, we need to provide tax relief during this transitionary period when the tax cuts and jobs expires at the end of next year. But Biden is asleep at the switch. I want to put that back on the screen, too, if we can, because we had some examples here. A single filer with no kids making $75,000, their tax burden would increase more than $1,700 a year. Single, two kids earning $52,000, tax increase of almost $1,500 a year. And you mentioned uh, if you're married with three kids, as an example, and making $200,000, like you said, $7,500. These are huge, huge increases. We know Biden pledged there would not be an increase in taxes on those making less than $400,000 a year, especially, Brandon, when inflation clearly is not going away. Interest rates have increased the cost of everything, including mortgage rates, car loans. What would this also do to the federal deficit? How would this impact that as well? Yeah, we're going to have a tough needle to thread here because we have enormous deficit problems, as we know all too well. During the pandemic, spending just went through the roof. It was supercharged. We already had problems. But now we're tackling a $34 trillion in growing national debt. So we do not have a lot of money to throw around here. So we're need to, going to need to craft a tax package that takes care of small businesses, of working families, but also spurs our economy. Because if our economy starts to collapse, Guess what happens? People pay less in the way of taxes. And when that happens, our deficit grows, our economy slows, and more and more people are out of work and actually receiving taxpayer benefits, getting on uh, welfare and other programs. And that hurts our fiscal position even more. So we need a tax package that stimulates growth without adding to the deficit. It's going to be a tough needle to thread. Uh, and it's going to be a big task for Congress next next year. In 2017, when this act you know, was passed, it also slashed corporate tax rates from 35 to 21 percent, which Biden is also expected to raise. He's talking about raising the corporate tax now to 28 percent. What effect will this have on consumers if corporations see a substantial increase in their taxes? And what is the solution here, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, that's an easy fallback solution for politicians. Let's beat up on corporations. Let's beat up on these large multinational companies. I think it's a horrible idea, though. When you, re when you raise taxes on corporations, they end up passing those increases down to consumers in the form of higher prices. Guess what? That's more inflation. Or they cut wages. And the other thing we need to think about here is our position globally. We have about a middle-of-the-pack tax rate when it comes to our top corporate rate. If we raise that up, what we'll see is corporations moving to jurisdictions that have friendlier tax and regulatory climates. That's what we saw before 2017 when we had these corporate inversions, corporations moving their operations overseas, their headquarters overseas, taking those high paying jobs with them. We'd be back to those bad old days when corporations are leaving for greener pastures yeah. effectively. Yeah, in fact, you say the solution is to keep these tax cuts permanent and instead, cut, cut government spending. How would Biden's green energy subsidies, for instance, how much would that offset if we were to slash some of that? I mean, that would help a lot. Most scorekeepers say that would cost over a trillion dollars. There's going to cost over a trillion dollars those green subsidies. The Cato Institute actually released an analysis that said it's more like three trillion dollars. So getting rid of those would pay for a large chunk of permanence for the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. That would cost, incidentally, anywhere from three and a half to $4 trillion. So we still have some money to fill in there. 
going to have to make some tough choices in Washington. Politicians don't like to make tough choices no. generally, <laughs> but they're going to have to roll up their sleeves and get to work. They really are. Executive Vice President of the National Taxpayers Union, Brandon Arnold. Great to see you. Have a great weekend, sir. Thanks, Jen. Still have